Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm in favor of the motion, be it resolved, that in recognition of Earth Day, this House reaffirm its commitment to rise to the challenge of climate change and protect our shared environment now and for future generations. Mr. Speaker, the world has been celebrating Earth Day on April 22nd since 1970. 51 years ago, Inspired by the energy of the student anti-war movement, 20 million Americans, 10% of the population at that time, took to the streets, parks, and auditoriums to draw attention to the impact of 150 years of industrial development on human health and the environment. The organizers of the first Earth Day witnessed the ravages of a massive oil spill that occurred in early 1969. That's what motivated them to take action. And to this day, the Santa Barbara, California spill ranks as the third largest oil spill in North American waters. So Mr. Speaker, in honor of Earth Day, I'd like to talk about our dependence on oil and what it's doing to our environment. And of course, as the member for Burnaby North, I have a particular concern about the transportation of oil, as do the people of my, communi of my community. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the federal government is relentless in its intent to build a pipeline that will transport about a million barrels of diluted bitumen a day, about triple the current capacity from the tar sands in Alberta to the coast right here in Burnaby where it will be shipped by tanker every day to facilities in other countries where it will be refined and sold back to Canadians at a higher price than if it were refined here in Canada. And as this highly toxic inflammable substance pours into my community to await shipment, it will be stored in tanks on the side of a mountain in an earthquake zone surrounded by ever drier forests in what is one of the most populated areas of British Columbia. There is a lot wrong with this scenario, but let's start with climate change. The production of synthetic crude from the tar sands releases about three times the greenhouse gas emissions per barrel than does the production of conventional oil. Furthermore, it takes about 2.2 barrels of fresh water to extract each barrel of bitumen. So if a million barrels of diluted bitumen will be coming to Burnaby every day, does that mean that another community is losing the equivalent of 2.2 million barrels of drinking water every day? Already, the extraction of bitumen has created 170 kilometers of toxic lakes of waste material. That's half the size of Okanagan Lake. Mr. Speaker, more than one quarter of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions come from the oil and gas sector. Making it easier to export diluted bitumen will only make climate change worse. So how did we get here? Let's not forget that the government of Christy Clark endorsed the pipeline. Some critics have said they were bought off to the tune of almost $800,000 in campaign donations and the promise of close to a billion dollars, which would of course have helped them create the illusion that they were balancing the provincial budget. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? But those who opposed this pipeline were not and still are not deterred. And we were winning in the court of public opinion. And then Justin Trudeau and the federal liberals bought the pipeline further entrenching their vested interest. Mr. Speaker, are we to conclude that in Canada, a political party that has the word liberal in its name is telegraphing that it exists to serve the rich and powerful? And wasn't that confirmed last week when a federal parliamentary secretary publicly admitted that exorbitant housing prices is a deliberate policy of his government to attract rich foreign investors? Mr. Speaker, our government has a different relationship with the people of British Columbia. We defended our right to protect the environment within our borders all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. Unfortunately, 
the Supreme Court ruled that constitutionally, the federal government has the exclusive right to regulate interprovisional transportation. But I would ask the people of Burnaby not to give up. There is too much at stake. You've won in the court of public opinion before, and you can do it again. Together, we can make the TMX pipeline expansion a defining issue in the upcoming federal election. Thank you. Thank you.